Hello, in this video I hope to make my proof for the Riemann hypothesis as simple as I can for anyone to understand uh, that all non-trivial zeros of the zeta function have real part one half. A zeta function is just a, a, a function of continuous addition, one plus one half, square, and the square into two in essence. And now you can put any number denoting in by the s in that function to get the, the result. Now pi, and this is pi, is not uh, for pi, but in this instance, a notation for continuous multiplying and the, for the prime number theorem. And when you use the golden key formula, it's just simply a reduction down to the prime numbers and the yield product formula here. But in this, I hope to also uh, show how, how uh, the von Cox result pronounced pi of x integral log integral of x plus big O of root x log x works. And uh, that uh, mk, uh, Mobius k equals to big O k one half as opposed to the error term as well as Ramage Juan's numbers of uh, negative 1 over 12 is, is the result of adding all numbers continuously or 0 when you cube those or square those excuse me or 1 over 120 when you cube them. Now start to demonstrate you, uh, it's good to have a split of sound and now an older method for showing with a compass and straight edge this will all be Euclidean geometry the the measurements on the uh, straight edge have no relevance it's all set by uh, what you determine it with the radius of the compass now the method in this if we're using calling these squares one then this would be one using Pythagorean theorem this is an equilateral triangle so 0 0.5 that would give you uh, this the hypothesis of 1.25 or the root of that to get the answer of uh, 1.1180339. Uh, Basically, you're getting the golden ratio. You could do times that using the uh, formula for the area of a circle, and that actually gives you 3.14. It's off from pi slightly, and then when you use a 4, or excuse me, 3.9, and the 4 of the square, it's just off by its squaring the circle a thousandth. Now you can perfect that mathematically with the formula here now once again showing you that this is uh 1.18 using the same method there if we're going to now if we were calling this one that would be 0.5 adding 0.5 to that would give you the golden ratio 1.618 now to show how logarithmic functions work now as we go down for calling this one 1.618 and then this or uh, down decimal points. Now we're down the, um, excuse me, 0.3819 when we square that. Now if we cube that, we got 2.23, the square root of 5 uh, divided by 10. Now as to get the golden ratio, you can a little trick with your calculator, square root of 5. And then you just basically add or subtract 1 from that and divide it by 2. If you just divide it by 2, once again, you get the 1.18 to show the relevance of that. And if you cube the square root of 5, you get 11.18. And uh, basically, so if you're calling this 10, it shows how with a, just a compass and straight edge, if this is 10, then this would be, uh, you can simply go from this section there from the 5, the 1.11.18 is cubing the square root of 5. A little trick. But now you can see with the golden ratio, the trick is here, like you can add just four point, those two numbers together, the square and the cube, you get the 6.18. Or and now if you just divide 2.618, you get 2.618. Or if you divide the 2.618 from 4.23, so then you get the, uh, you get the golden ratio again, 1.618. And vice versa, you can see how the inverse works as well. Now to uh, digress to the Riemann hypothesis and all prime numbers, how that's relevant. Now using the axioms of Euclidean geometry, known as the flower of life, you can divide the center circle or six circles around it, getting the divisions and creating equilateral triangles, three more than to get the tetactrus of 10. Now I'm just creating levels on each one, dividing the uh, equilateral triangles there. Then from that point there, we're creating circles that would be the concentric circles after following the rules of big O. And these are just the continuation hypothesis as the relevance to these circles. That what happens within this 1 12th 
is good, relevant to the, in symmetry to the others. And mathematically, that's where it's how it comes down to negative 12. And I'll show you the reduction using the inversion. It's all relative to that. The 10 is relative to the 1 or it just doesn't matter where you want to put the decimal point. Now, once you divide that into equal out of triangles, now, basically, you have... Now, oh, now, as opposed to this, I'm setting it up. It's a cross between a Sapensky triangle and a... Uh, and, uh, yeah. A, a, a pastel triangle, except I'm setting up the Hermitian matrix. And this one, instead of using the 1.18, but it's, it's, you could say 1.8, it's all relative to the radius here. Now, if you were to do that, when I divide it into the half, it would be then the golden ratio on each one and, and vice 2.618 there as well. Or then this, I'm setting a Hermitian matrix, I'm gonna call that one, and then the, what was relatively, so this is one at the top, an imaginary line, still following the, to the real line here but everything that happens i'm going to show well to to the one half right now sine and cosine sine would be uh you're either going to get the 0.5 or you're going to get that with the uh the the, the, the formula for a uh, for the an equal out triangle the height and that is the square root of three divided by two in each relative unit you know what this the height is up to the the level of the equal out triangle and then the height up at the top of the arc is just going to be that number it's the one since this the way we're setting up the mission matrix so but now with just the compass and straight edge you can try set the 60 degree angle in this method you see just from the perpendicular bisector you just follow that through the arc and you see where it, where it intersects there will be exactly the 20 degrees and you could check it with a protractor afterwards, but anyone can do it first with just the compass and straight edge. Now, and then, now and this one shows once you've done that, it's all relative to the circle. It could be anywhere else. The angles always stay the same. And when you when you bisect that, that automatically gives you six. And then, now using that to find any prime number, moving to the next one, five. Showing now you just this shows the five sections of the line and to find the bisector. To go up and that gives you the perfect the perfect degrees of a five division and this also shows demonstrates that when that comes up it's a sieve because 10 now will share the, the angles with the five as well now this is a mult tens of multiple two times five it also is a uh therefore a uh, even number and all even numbers will will always follow the multiple of this of the uh the half line there which would be an imaginary line would be the zero point and this is going to show how all uh, non-trivial zeros of the Riemann hypothesis fall on this line this is the prime number theorem is what the, he created for and this is also showing uh, Riemann manifolds because like find out going up to seven now this is compass and straight edge Euclidean proof now I can find any of these relative circle and technically these divisions are times six but you can still get if you want the seven the the 14 the 21 where everyone draws so once again same rule you get seven divisions now even number 14 times two but it shares the common angles with this now 21 an odd number will share the, the angles with uh, the seven but it'll also if you follow from the tri section those will also follow the common angles as well with 21 therefore eliminating it as a candidate for a prime number now moving on to 19 following the same rule here i've shown where the perpendiculars go up and then that the rays following the degrees divisions of 19 and once again that's that's uh times six to the actual divisions so in this way, it's another way of squaring circle, but I'm showing you where you can, you're actually with the compass of straight edge, pure Euc Euclidean axioms, following them, how anyone can do it to get that. And this right here shows once, oh, I forgot to mention that once you're up there, the way it's working, if you didn't see, instead of uh, diverging out, because you could just keep doing this with your compass, you just split it by one half, each constantly creating smaller and smaller fractal, it's a Pinsky triangle of the numbers. And as you divide it all, then one half is where all the next odd numbers come from. But then, then you can find that the sieve out the angles. And this shows how you could continue that on and this called the relative, this will just fractal down, but all prime numbers 
are all going to fall in the relative 0.5, and this shows the 5, 7, well, obviously 2 and 3. And the next one up, we have 11, and then we have 13, 17, 19, and so forth. Now, to do the whole thing out, here's to do to draw with what was in, supposedly impossible with just compass and straight edge. You can then just set the compass to six parts out. Here's the a seven. See, I've gone out, so, and then you just roll around a circle, or you could choose to draw up the grid all the way there, giving you the perfect division. And this shows uh, a seven and 11, and a 13 and 13, seven and 11, both came from the axis of 30 degrees on the side, this area, uh, you know, which would be 120 degrees as well, or, uh, and this would be the cosine, or once I didn't bring up cosine, is either, and six sin at those point of 30 and 60 is either gives you 0.5 or inversely uh, the square root of the three divided in half. Now here's, now you can find any point under with this method as well, under the, the arc of the circle. Now, one of my favorites is 18, and I'll show you, then I'll feed, basically you always know that this is the unit circle follows out and the, the whatever division you want, but this particular one, to find out what this line is under, you just use the law of sines, and it happens to give you a line that's 6.180339, the golden ratio times 10, and that works with anyone on this one, but now I show you that relative there, because bringing it back down to, to cubing the circle, and I cubing it and all the functions, but this shows relatively whatever you want with math and you just follow the angles. It's a, a, a sieve for prime numbers, all of which will always fall as you diverge, uh, uh, converge into one because it can never reach zero. You can constantly divide it, simply splitting here, but they will always emerge on the 0.5 line. Uh, thank you. Enjoy. Have a great day.